सो वेलकम 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 एवरी वन टू येट अनदर अमेजिंग रिविजन सेशन ऑन सी ए फाइनल फाइनेंशियल रिपोर्टिंग एंड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू रिवाइज आ लवी डवी क्यूटी क्यूटी इंडेस वन जीरो टू दैट इज शेयर बेस्ड पेमेंट अ वेरी स्कोरिंग इंडेस ऑल्सो जस्ट बिफोर स्टार्टिंग लेट मी टेल यू दिस इज गोइंग टू बी अ हंड्रेड परसेंट इंग्लिश रिविजन लेक्चर फॉर माई लवली 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 साउथ इंडिया स्टूडेंट ओके सो यर वी आर गोइंग टू रिवाइज ऑल द कंसेप्ट अलॉन्ग विद द इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन ऑल्सो वी विल रिवाइज राइट ओके सो लेट्स स्टार्ट द रिविजन अच्छा इफ यू आर वॉचिंग दिस ऑन यूट्यूब बिफोर वॉचिंग इफ यू हैव एंड सब्सक्राइब द चैनल वॉचिंग द रिविजन विदाउट सब्सक्राइबिंग सो फर्स्ट सब्सक्राइब एंड देन ओनली वॉच ऑल्सो इफ यू हैव एनी फ्रेंड्स यू कैन शेयर विद दम ऑल्सो इफ यू हैव एंड एनरोल फॉर द लेक्चर आई हैव अ इंग्लिश बैच एक्सक्लूसिवली फॉर यू गाइज ऑन बीबी वचर्स डॉट कॉम इफ यू फील द नीड यू कैन एनरोल ओके नाउ लेट्स स्टार्ट द रिविजन इन थ्री टू वन एंड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इंडेस 102 जीरो टू नेम इज शेयर बेस्ड पेमेंट ना वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ शेयर बेस्ड पेमेंट सी इट इज नथिंग बट अग्रीमेंट एग्रीमेंट बिटवीन हूम देर इज वन कंपनी एंड अनदर पार्टी ओके वेर द कंपनी रिसीव गुड्स एंड सर्विस एंड इन एक्सचेंज इट गिव शेयर टू दी अदर पार्टी ओके सो नाउ वाइल एक्सप्लेनिंग ऑल्सो इन केस यू रिमेंबर आई टोल्ड यू इट देर इज अग्रीमेंट बिटवीन द कंपनी एंड अनदर पार्टी ओके दैट अनदर पार्टी कैन बी इंप्लॉय ऑल्सो और कैन बी अ थर्ड पार्टी ऑल्सो ओके सो शेयर बेस्ड पेमेंट कैन बी बिटवीन कंपनी एंड इंप्लॉय और इट कैन बी बिटवीन कंपनी एंड थर्ड पार्टी राइट ओके नाउ द शेयर बेस्ड पेमेंट कैन बी ऑफ टू टाइप्स वन इज इक्विटी सेटल्ड सो यर कंपनी विल रिसीव गुड्स एंड सर्विस एंड कंपनी विल गिव शेयर्स और इट कैन बी कैश सेटल्ड वे द कंपनी विल रिसीव गुड्स एंड सर्विस बट इट विल गिव कैश सो इट विल इफ इट विल गिव कैश हाउ कैन बी शेयर बेस्ड पेमेंट because the payment of cash will be based on the price of shares how much cash to be given is to be based on the price of shares so do remember first it can be between company and another party that another party can be employee as well as any other party and your company receives goods and service and in exchange it will give either shares equity settled or it will give cash that is cash settled okay so done this was the first point definition then the next point is scope what is the meaning of scope few issue of shares are not covered here for example if you are issuing shares to your shareholders like bonus share right shares not covered here if you are issuing shares in purchase consideration not covered here yes but if you are giving shares to the employee of selling company for being in employment then it will be share based payment apart from that if you are entering into a contract of exchange right where you are exchanging a non financial item with with your shares so in that case if in that exchange let's say for example i'm going to buy a iphone from you okay and in return i will give you my company shares if my intention is to settle on the net basis that means i will not take the iphone i will not give the shares we will just settle in the incremental uh, fair value difference between the fair value if the intention is to settle on net basis it is not covered here it will be covered under 109 but the if the intention is to settle on gross basis then it will be covered under index 102 okay done this was the second point next point share based payment with other than employees now let's imagine you are entering into a share based payment with any other party apart from employee so now it can be of two types uh, one can be equity settled so let's just look at the entries so if it is with other than employees here it can be equity settled or cash settled in equity settled company will receive goods and service and give shares in cash settled company will receive goods and service and give cash okay what will be the entry if you are receiving goods or service you will either debit the asset or the expense to sbp reserve why sbp reserve because you are going to give shares <coughs> then whenever you issue the shares you will say sbp reserve to capital to premium acha if you have promised to give cash based on the price of shares in that case you will debit asset or expense but credit sbp liability why liability because you are going to give cash whenever you cap you whenever you give cash you will debit the liability and then say to cash and bank okay few examples also i discussed acha whenever you pass this entry at what amount will i record this entry so do remember whenever you are doing the measurement as per 102 in this case you will record both the debits and credits at first preference fair value of asset or service acquired that means let's say for example i am acquiring a iphone from you and in return i am giving you shares the so first preference will be given to the fair value of iphone if that is not available then you will give second preference to fair value of shares given up okay do remember that this is contrary to what we discuss in index 1340 yeah do remember that anyways acha this board notes i will upload on telegram you can download from the my telegram channel description in description i'll put the telegram link anyways okay done sir now the next point is sbb with employees now here comes the important part 
where there is a share based payment between the company and the employee. So first I'm discussing equity settled. So what happens in equity settled? First I will discuss few terms. One is grant date. Grant date means the agreement date. The date when they enter into the agreement of share based payment. Then it is the vesting period. What is the vesting period? Employees will not get, not get the shares for free. They will have to fulfill some conditions. So during the tenure, they will fulfill the condition that is vesting period. Let's say I tell the employee to stay in service for three years. Three years is the vesting period. Then there are conditions. Condition can be of two types. Broadly. Vesting, non-vesting. Non-vesting means there is a lock-in period. After you receive the shares, you cannot sell it for two years. Lock-in period. Non-vesting condition has no impact on vesting period. Okay. Then there are vesting conditions. Service condition, performance condition. Service condition means the employee has to stay in service for a certain number of years. Okay. So if the service condition is three years, vesting period is three years. Why do we need the vesting period, sir? Because whatever is the share-based payment expense, you will book across the tenure. You will book across the period. Do remember that. Okay. Then performance condition. Performance condition can be further bifurcated into two parts. One is non-market based condition. Second is market based condition. What is the meaning of non-market based condition? Giving such target which is within the control of the employee. Achieving a sales target, profit target, cost target. It is within the control of the employee. So if you have given a sales target for two years or profit target to achieve in two years or cost target to be achieved in two years, then vesting period will be two years. Okay. So this non-market based condition are considered while calculating vesting period. But what about market based condition? What is the meaning of market based condition? Imagine I told my uh, employees that you have to achieve a share price target. That means I will give the shares. I will give you some compensation to the employee, either shares or cash only if the company share price increases in future. So if the share price goes from 150 to 250, then only I will give the shares to the employee. Now this target meeting is not within the control of the employee. So how to account for this? This we will separately discuss in another point. That is point number five. Anyways, now in case of equity settled, how will you compute the expense? So it is very simple. Number of employees that are expected to fulfill the condition, multiply by number of shares you offered per employee, multiply by the fair value on grant date. In case of equity settled, we take the fair value on grant date. Multiply by expired period, divide by total vesting period minus expense already booked in previous years. Okay. To understand this, I took one example also. Through this example, just remember, if there is a vesting period, on grant date, you will pass no entry. No entry is passed on grant date. Okay. Then, if you want to pass the entry on first year end, when you take number of employees, don't take the whole employees. You will also consider the employees that are left and the employees who are expected to leave. You will deduct both of them. Okay. So in first year, I 20 left, 30 expected to leave. I will consider both of them. So I will calculate expense only for 950. Achha, similarly, when you come to second year, in second year, you will take what actually left in year one. Don't take the expectation of year one in year two. You will take only the actual of year one. You will take the actual left of year two and you will take the again expected of year two. Okay. <coughs> similarly do in year 3 also so to this week uh, came to know how to find the expenditure okay simple Achha. so do remember if the vesting period is 3 years you will not book a single amount of expense on first day because the expenditure will be booked on first year end so first year end second year end third year end you will book the expenditure how will you book the expenditure so you will pass a simple entry employee benefit expense account debit to SBP reserve account Okay, and whenever you issue the shares, you will say SBP reserve to equity share capital to security premium. Achha, by chance during exercise, if few employees do not exercise the option, transfer the balance to retained earnings. Okay, anyways, chalo. so also I told you one thing in case of equity settled, if any reversal is happening during vesting period, reversal will happen through PNL. But if the reversal is happening post vesting period, the reversal, the balance of SBP reserve will be transferred to retained earnings okay logic we already discussed Chalo. on that note we have one illustration number seven which we will revise so what we will do along with the relevant concept we will take up the relevant questions also okay and at the end we will see if anything is left we will take take that up separately so uh first is illustration number seven which we have to discuss i will just revise okay Achha, one more thing just because i'm discussing the important question that doesn't mean only this will come in exam in exam anything will Anything can come. But the main thing is I'm giving you those questions which covers 100% of the concepts. Okay, do remember that part. Okay, so illustration number seven. What is there? 100 shares, 500 employees are given. Okay, now what is happening is if you read the question on face of it, you will feel the vesting period is three years. But ideally here, vesting period was never three years. It is said that the employees will, the shares will vest at the end of first year if you meet the target in first year. So if the target is met in first year, your vesting period is only one year. If the target is met in two years, vesting period is two years. If target is met in three years, vesting period is three years. Okay. But in this question, 
वेस्टिंग पीरियड फ्रॉम डे वन विल नेवर बी थ्री इयर्स ना हाउ टू सॉल्व दिस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल टू सॉल्व दिस यू नो आई वी प्रिपेयर अ सिंपल टेबल ओके इन दिस टेबल इन द पर्टिकुलर कॉलम जस्ट राइट ईच एंड एवरी एलिमेंट ऑफ द फॉर्मुला इंप्लॉइज शेयर्स ग्रांड डेट फेयर वैल्यू एक्सपायर्ड पीरियड टोटल वेस्टिंग पीरियड एंड देन विल गेट द एक्सपेंस सो नंबर ऑफ एम्प्लॉज यू ऑलरेडी टोल्ड वी टेक द एक्सपेक्टेशन ऑल्सो देन नंबर ऑफ शेयर्स इज गिवन फेयर वैल्यू एंड ग्रांड डेट वी टेक नाउ एक्सपायर्ड पीरियड इज टिल ईयर वन एंड वन ईयर इज एक्सपायर्ड वॉट अबाउट टोटल वेस्टिंग पीरियड नाउ इफ यू रीड द क्वेश्चन केयरफुली In this paragraph, the expectation of first year is given. As on first year, we know two things: that in first year target is not met, and our expectation is that it will be met in year two. This is our expectation in first year that it will be met in year two. So the vesting period as per first year will be two years. Of course, when you come to second year, target was not met, so the vesting period again become three years. Okay. So please solve this question. It is a very good question. Only the important part here is vesting period. Then you will calculate the expense. Whatever expense you get, just book it. And on exercise, you will just transfer it to uh, equity share capital. Sometimes the uh, face value of the share will be missing. So you can just pass the entry like this. This is how ICI uh, passes the entry. Okay, okay. So this was a share based payment. Uh, if you can see, it was equity settled share based payment in case of employees. Okay. so this was one good question which i feel uh, you should definitely solve now we will move on towards the next concept and that is market based condition now what is the meaning of market based condition remember i told you here uh, in market based condition the condition meeting is not within the control of the employee so how to solve this see i took one example so let's say company announced a plan okay condition is that market price should exceed 400 rupees now we never know that when this target will be achieved so in this case company will estimate a vesting period on day one they will estimate they don't know na when will this target be met so let's say company estimates a vesting period of 4 years no matter what book the expense as per 4 years only so there are three cases i took first case condition was met in 4 years so book the expense over 4 years second case condition was met in 6 years in market based condition we are not concerned whether the condition is fulfilled or not even if the condition met in 6 years you will not defer any expense to 6 years you will book the expense in 4 years only so book in year 1 2 3 4 in year 5 and 6 you will book nothing only in year 6 you will issue the shares okay acha what if condition is met early then what to do then in year 1 and year 2 you will book the expense as per 4 years only but if the condition is met early in year 3 you will book the remaining full expense so book the expense of year 3 as well as year 4 in year 3 only do remember the mistake you will make make is if the condition is met early in year 1 and year 2 we don't know that it can meet early so in year 1 year 2 book the expense based on 4 years only in year 3 book the remaining full expenditure and then issue the shares okay acha what if the condition is never met this extra case i discussed not covered in your syllabus but still whatever it is never met so whatever is the balance of sbp reserve will be transferred to retained earnings simple based on that we have uh, illustration number 17 you can just refer it is a very simple question based on the example i discussed okay then uh, the next point i guess is modification <coughs> now what is the meaning of modification modification means i'll try to explain this with the help of an example okay so in modification let's say you announce a plan Okay, hundred employees, three years. Number of options you are giving is five thousand. Fair value is one fifty. Very good. At the end of year one, what happens is, acha, what what is the meaning of fair value and grand date? So normally, what happens is, in ESOP, there was there used to be some exercise price in IPCC. You must you must have remembered that that if the market price is two fifty, exercise price is hundred. So employee has to pay hundred rupees, but he will get a share worth two fifty rupees. So the expense for company is only one fifty. Okay. Now imagine what if the market price falls drastically, so the uh, interest in this ESOP decreases for the employee. Now, so what the company does later on is company waves of the excise price to some extent. So company will say, "Acha, instead of giving hundred rupees, now give only thirty rupees. Seventy rupees company has waved off. This is known as modification or repricing, where the company has increased the worth for you. How? By reducing the excise price. Now, how to account for this? A simple technique you have to use. Treat the original plan separately. What was my original plan? Hundred employees, three years, five thousand shares, and fair value one fifty. Treat this part separately, and treat the modified part separately. What is the meaning of modified part? You are waving off seventy rupees now for the employees. Treat this part separately. Treat this like a separate plan. So how will you treat this? So this was my original plan. First, I booked the expense over three years. Then modification happened not on first day. It happened on year one end. So this date becomes the grand date for modification. Okay, so treat it like a separate plan. Treat it like a plan you have announced for your employees, where you are giving the benefit of seventy rupees. Okay, so on year one end you announce the modification, so this becomes the grand date for modification. 
So vesting period for modification will not be the whole three years. It will be from year one end to year three end. So it will be two years only. Okay. And what will be the farewell of modification? The amount which you have waived off for the employees that is rupees 70. Extra you waved off no, later on that is 70 rupees. This 70 will not be directly given. So how will you find it? You will take the fair value after modification on modification date less the fair value before modification on modification date. Let's say you are doing the modification year one end two fair values will be given that before modification this was the fair value after modification the company increased the worth and increased the fair value to this much so that difference you have to take so do you remember in case of equity settled we are not concerned with fair value changes but why are we considering it here the simple reason is in case of modification you are waiving off extra amount for the employees that is why we are considering it here so for this modification two years be will become the vesting period i told you how to calculate the fair value now when will you book the expense for modification Will I book the expense on year one end for modification? No. This is the grant date for modification. We never book an expense on grant date. So for modification, the first expenditure that you will book is on second year end. And then you will book on third year end. So I told you also, the expense will be nil for modification on grant date. Okay. So when you see, if you see closely, uh, we will do one question also for this to just understand this better. Illustration number 10 we have. Now what was there in illustration number 10? Let's see. Mm, illustration number 10 so what is there uh, so there are uh, 150 shares 1000 employees service condition 3 years okay normal plan is as per 129 rupees that is the original plan account for it separately now at the end of first year we reprised how did you reprice because the fair value fell to 50 you reprised and increased the worth to 80 that means how much you must have waived off for the employees you have provided the benefit of 30 rupees to the employees because at year one end, fair value fell to 50. See, normally fair value decrease is not, not my concern. But because of this fair value decrease, I am repricing the options and increasing the worth to 80. How will I reprice? I told you. You will wave off the excise price maybe. So you your fair value and modification is 30 rupees. So you will account for this 30 separately and this 129 separately. Okay. How will I do this? Just see. So prepare two tables for this. Okay. One will be for original plan where you will take 129 rupees and calculate the expense for the three years. Okay, then can I say you modified on year one end? You modified on year one end. So on year one end becomes a date for modification. So during the year one for modification, you will book nothing. Okay, so prepare the same table for modified part also. But in year one, no data will come. Okay, number of employees copy from original SBP. Only this fair value on modification. It will be the waived amount or the uh, difference amount. That is rupees 30. Clear? And you will book the expense over across two years. Why? Because you modified on year one end. Because you modified on year one end. Right? So that is why that year one end becomes a modification date. Grant date for modification. On that date, you will book nothing. You will book, you will book across the periods. That is the concept of modification done. We also have one more question based on this. And that is, I guess, illustration number mm, in 20s, I guess it is. Based on modification. Okay. Here. Illustration number 22. Same thing. I have given the solution also. Just remember one point here. Employees are given for two years. But here, more irrelevant data is given. See, you have been given grant data fair value. That is important for us. Then, they have also given that fair value increase to 1.30. In equity settled, we are not concerned with the fair value increase. Only one line is there. Here, you modified in September. 30th September, you modified. Before modification value was 0 0.90, after modification replies to 1.05. So you increase the worth by how much? You increase the worth by 0 0.15 rupees. This is the modification value. And because you modified on 30th September, how much is the vesting period for modification? You modified in totality there were 3 years vesting period. You modified after 1.5 years. So remaining vesting period in modification is only 1.5 years. See, this was a tenure. You modified somewhere here. After 1.5 years you modified. So remaining vesting period for modification only 18 months. That is 1.5 years. So in the first in the first year end for modification nothing will come. In the second year end for modification book 6 months expense. Do remember that. Third year you can calculate but data is not asked. In question they have only asked till 31st March 13. Do remember that. So we solved this also. Okay. So this was the modification concept which we just discussed. Next concept is cancellation. What happens here? So company announces a plan and then cancels it. So now how to account for this? See the accounting is very simple. I'll show it to you. Here. Okay. See. So company announced a plan. Okay. SBB plan. And then comp for five years let's say. Now everything went good for two years. You book the expense for two years. In the third year company cancels it. 
सो अ नॉर्मल लॉजिक सेस रिवर्स इट रिवर्स द एक्सपेंसिव कैंसिल इज देर नो इन इयर ऑफ कैंसिलेशन यू विल हैव टू टू थ्री थिंग्स फर्स्ट कैंसिलेशन इज ट्रीटेड लाइक जस्ट लाइक अ वेस्टिंग पीरियड एंडेड ट्रीटेड लाइक द वेस्टिंग पीरियड ऑफ ऑफ फाइव इयर्स हैज नाउ बिकम थ्री इयर्स ओनली बिकॉज यू कैंसिल इन थर्ड ईयर सो जस्ट ट्रीटेड लाइक अ वेस्टिंग पीरियड एंड सो डू नॉट रिवर्स द एक्सपेंस डायरेक्टली फर्स्ट बुक द रिमेनिंग एक्सपेंडिचर ऑफ ईयर थ्री ईयर फोर ईयर फाइव बुक दैट रिमेनिंग फुल एक्सपेंस इन द थर्ड ईयर फर्स्ट थिंग यू हैव टू डू सेकंड नाउ यू विल रिवर्स सो यू वॉट एवर यू बुक्ड इन वन टू एंड थ्री ईयर्स नाउ यू विल रिवर्स एंड रिवर्सल विल बी ट्रांसफर टू रिटेन अर्निंग्स सेकेंड थिंग थर्ड थिंग समटाइम्स इन कंपेंसेशन कंपनी ऑल्सो पेस समटाइम्स इन कैंसिलेशन कंपनी पेस एंड कंपेंसेशन सो मेक द पेमेंट फॉर दैट कंपेंसेशन लेट्स ए कंपनी इज मेकिंग द पेमेंट फॉर फोर फिफ्टी सो मेक दैट पेमेंट पे दैट कंपेंसेशन एज पर फोर फिफ्टी बट वेन यू पे यू विल पे फॉर रिटर्न अर्निंग्स Why not from SBP reserve, sir? Because all SBP reserve has already been reversed. Okay, so you will pay off from retained earnings. But debiting retained earnings, there is a maximum limit given. Whenever you are paying the compensation, whatever is the fair value on the date of cancellation, that is the maximum amount you can debit. So even if you are making a compensation payment of four fifty, but the maximum fair value on cancellation date is four ten. So you can debit only four ten retained earnings. But if you are making a payment of four fifty. Difference will be transferred to profit and loss. Do remember that part. Okay, so this was the concept of cancellation. We have one question also based on this. That is illustration number eleven. What is that? You can see directly the solution also. We had eight employees in the first year. We booked the expenditure. In second year, year of cancellation is there. Okay, but in second year there are nine employees now. So now what to do? Do not do the reversal directly. First book the remaining expenditure. So in year of cancellation, just remember three things we have to do. Book the remaining expense. Booked sir. Then reverse the remaining expense, reverse to retained earnings, done sir. Then pay off the compensation. You are making a compensation payment on ninety five, but the fair value is only ninety. So debit only ninety. Maximum amount will go to profit and loss. That's it. This was the concept of uh, cancellation and modification. Okay. So if you have a look at the chart, if you have a look at the chart, what all we have done? We have done definition, scope, SBP with other than employees, SBP with employees, market based done, modification done, cancellation done. right simple yes sir now we will also do sbb with employees okay we will do sbb <coughs> with employees but cash settled okay so now what is the meaning of cash settled here company will not give shares company will give cash but cash will be based on the price of shares of course right okay so okay cash settled here it is now how to do this How to account for this? So it is very simple. The accounting is same like equity settled. Acha, these are also known as SARSA stock appreciation rights. Also, the accounting is same as equity settled, except except that whenever you calculate expense in in case of equity, we used to take fair value on grant date. In case of cash, we will take the fair value on each year end. Why the fair value on each year end? The simple logic is because we are giving cash. If the fair value changes, that will affect me. In case of shares, even if the fair value changes, I have to give the same number of shares now. That is why I should take fair value on grant date. In case of cash, if the fair value increases, it will affect me. That is why I will take fair value on each year end. Do remember that. Okay. Then another thing is in entry instead of SBP reserve, pass the entry SBP liability. Also, in equity, do you remember I told you if reversal happens during vesting period, reversal is done through profit and loss. If reversal happens post vesting period, reversal happens through retained earnings. But in case of cash settled, if there is any reversal happening, it may be during vesting period, it may be post vesting period. It will always be done to employee benefit, expense, profit and loss. There is no concept of retained earnings in cash settled. Why? Because whenever a liability is reversed, it is always transferred to profit and loss. Do remember that. To understand this part better, we have one illustration, illustration number twenty one, which is a good question. What is there? A normal question where seventy five employees, four hundred options, fair value is two hundred, but fair value on granted is of no use for me. Right, because there is a vesting period of four years, so I will take the fair value on each year end because cash settled is there. So I accounted for this. I prepared the table. I booked the expense across four years. Okay, there is a second part to this question as well, where the vesting period has reduced to three years, but this reduction we came to know only in the second year. In the second year, we came to know that vesting period is only three years. So how will you do for this now? So in the first year, you did not know about this. So in the first year, you will book as you will book the expense as per four years only. When you come in the second year. Your total vesting period becomes three years, because you modified the vesting period now. In the third year also, it it is three years now, because the vesting period is three years. In fourth year, no expenditure will come. So simple question, but yes, a good question which you can solve, of course. So this was cash settled for employees, uh, also known as SARs. Now there is one more concept. 
sars that west immediately what is the meaning of west immediately west immediately simply means westing period is zero there is no westing period maybe employee must have done some good deeds in the past because of which company is ready to give the shares today immediately immediately employee becomes eligible so now when you become eligible immediately company has to book the expense on grant date only see normally we never book the expense on grant date so this is the only case where because the shares are vested immediately full expense will be booked on grant date and if these are sar sar mean cash settled in cash settled we never consider the farewell on grant date we take the farewell on year end but because they are vesting immediately yet we will take the farewell on grant date only okay do remember that part so i have written also in above case in case of that vest immediately vesting period is zero full employee benefit expense will be booked on grant date at fair value on grant date okay acha in such type of questions there is one question where even if the employee is eligible on first day employee is not taking the cash on first day there is a excise period of 3 years so employee can exercise any time during the 3 years but there is one question where they have assumed that employee will exercise only at the end of third year and the employees living in between don't want the cash strange but yes it is there so how to account for this simple book the full expense on first day so uh, that is illustration number 2 i will show it to you wait there is a illustration illustration number 2 i guess here it is illustration number 2 so what i what is happening here is west immediately okay first april 95 is the fair value so because you are booking the fair value on first day take the 95 as fair value and book the full expense now excise period is given up to 3 years so employee can exercise any time up to 3 years so normally even if the employee is leaving during the excise period he will take his cash and leave na but in this question there are two assumptions first employee will take the money only at the end of third year second assumption is there that employee who are living in between don't want their money okay so what to do during the excise period during excise period keep on remeasuring based on the changes in fair value if you see the fair value is changing during excise period so just remeasure how to remeasure sir simple whatever options you are giving into the percentage of expected employee who will uh, stay for the 3 years into the fair value on year end minus whatever expense you have booked so just keep remeasuring this is remeasurement based on the changes in fair value so you will remeasure for year 1 year 2 year 3 and whenever they take the payment just make the payment at the end of last year so there are assumption in this question do remember that okay there is one more question illustration number 24 a very good question okay <coughs> here that issue has been resolved we were discussing now if the employee leaves early he will take his money here that issue has been resolved but there is a new concept of intrinsic value here i will try to explain it to you it is very simple see what is there here so uh, basically there is a question where are the 40 employees on 1st jan 15 Your vesting period is two years, and excise period is also two years. That is simple, okay? So basically, employee has to stay in service for two years, and then they can excise the shares any time between those two years, between the two years afterwards. Okay. Now, expectation is that ten percent employees will leave, and in reality, also ten percent only left. Okay. Now, share fair value has been given for all the four years. Very good. So what we will do initially? So initially, I will say vesting period is two years. so book the expense across 2 years so i booked it across 2 years that is simple now excise period is also 2 years 36 employees are there till the end they are eligible what is happening is six employees will take the money in the first year remaining 30 want the money in the second year and if you read the question there is also some intrinsic value which is given now how to account for this so simple i told you one thing only if in the first year of exercise there are 36 employees the employees who want the cash they will get the cash as per intrinsic value okay but before giving cash we will remeasure it so how to remeasure the employees who want the cash today will be remeasured at intrinsic value the employees who don't want the cash today will be remeasured at fair value so first remeasure it how will how will i do it so i will say six employees want the cash today remeasure based on 10 rupees and 30 employees don't want cash today remeasure as per 13 rupees okay less the expense which i already booked we will get some amount this is remeasuring remeasuring based on changes in fair value we remeasure it first and then make the payment to six employees how to make the payment based on intrinsic value only okay so in the year of exercise first remeasure and then make the payment to six employees okay similarly in the last year in the last year all 30s want their money so re first remeasure based on intrinsic value and then make the payment okay here the matter of coincidence is intrinsic and fair value are the same doesn't matter 
दे वॉन्ट दर मनी फर्स्ट रीमेजर एट इंटर्नसिक पे एट इंटर्नसिक वाइल रीमेजरिंग डू रिमेंबर वेन यू कैलकुलेट द अमाउंट यू विल ऑल्सो डिडक्ट ऑल द एक्सपेंस बुक प्रीवियसली सो डिडक्ट टू लैक सिक्सटीन डिडक्ट सेवेंटी टू डिडक्ट वन सिक्सटी टू बट एड बैक वन अमाउंट विच अमाउंट द अमाउंट ऑफ लाइबिलिटी विच यू रिवर्स वाइल मेकिंग द पेमेंट एड दैट बैक सो यू विल गेट अ रिवर्सल ड्यूरिंग रीमेजरमेंट सो रिवर्स थर्टी थाउजेंड एंड देन मेक द पेमेंट ऑफ थर्टी एम्प्लॉज एट इंटेंसिक वैल्यू ओके सो आई हैव रिटर्न द कंसेप्ट यर एज वेल दट द इम्प्लॉज हू वॉन्ट दर मनी दे विल बी रीमेजर एट इंटेंसिक एंड पेड एट इंटेंसिक द इम्प्लॉज डोट वॉन्ट दर मनी दे विल बी रीमेजर एट अ फेयर वैल्यू डू रिमेंबर माई मोटिव यर इज टू रिवाइज सो यू विल अंडरस्टैंड ऑल दीज थिंग्स वन यू आर स्टडीड इट अच्छा डोंट एक्सपेक्ट दैट सर आई एम स्टडिंग फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम वाई एम आर नॉट अंडरस्टैंडिंग बाबा दिस इज अ रिविजन वीडियो वेर आई एम ट्राइंग टू रिवाइज यू थ्रू थिंग्स सो दैट यू कैन रिकॉल इट मच इन अ क्विकर वे ओके डन सर so this was uh, cash settled that west immediately or uh, the case or second question was not west immediately or two year vesting period but uh, there was intrinsic value also given then the next uh, point is sbp with cash alternative sbp with cash alternative what is the meaning of this here you give the choice to the employees that employee can either choose uh, cash or employee can either choose shares that is the choice of the company now how will you account for this so the accounting is very simple see <coughs> i took a Illustration number three as the base. Okay, do remember. So how will account for this on grand date? Do three calculations. First, total fair value as per equity settled. So there was one employee who was supposed to get fifteen hundred shares. If he chose the equity option, and the fair value was one zero two. Do remember in this question there was a lock in involved. So lock in is only on shares if you choose equity settled. So take the lock in price ah because if the if there is lock in the fair value will be little less. The lock-in price is given. That if you consider lock-in, the fair value is only one zero two. Consider that that value. You will get the value as per equity settled. Okay. Then step two, calculate the total value as per cash settled. If the employee chooses cash, he will get thousand shares based on one one three rupees. Okay. Then third step is calculating incremental equity. Total equity minus the cash value is incremental equity. Now how to account for this? Simple. Cash settled, you will do full accounting. Why? Because if the employee chooses cash, company cannot avoid the payment. It is a liability. Present obligation, book it fully. For equity, you cannot book it fully. Why? Then it will come to dual accounting now. Double time expense will get booked. So what to do? So for equity, we will only account for the incremental part. So incremental part because in equity, employees are not changing. Fair value changes don't affect me in equity. So I will book this forty thousand across the vesting period. Simple. So what do we learn from this? When the option is with the employee. For cash, we do the full accounting. For equity, we do incremental accounting. How to do that? On grand date, calculate three values: total value of equity, total value of cash, and the incremental equity. Incremental equity directly divide by the vesting period and book it across the tenure. What about cash? You cannot directly divide by two. Why? Because cash settled gets affected by changes in fair value. So for cash, compute the expense separately. On year one end, based on the year one end's fair value, and on year two end, based on the year two end's fair value. Okay. So don't Don't tell me that. Uh, why did we compute cash settled value then to find the incremental equity on day one? Okay, and also if the incremental equity comes to zero or negative, you will do no accounting for equity. Just to clarify, then we did the accounting for uh, equity as well as cash. We did the accounting. If the employee chooses cash option, what to do? You will reverse the liability, give the cash because we have made the full provision for cash. So make the payment of cash. Whatever is the balance of reserve will get transferred to retained earnings. Simple. Is this clear to everyone? Yes, sir. acha there was one more question illustration number 6 based on the same grounds you can solve it on your own the only thing i discussed extra was i discussed both the options what if the employee chooses cash we already know liability to cash bank then reserve to retained earnings what if the employee chooses equity option so i will only discuss what ica has done so uh, what ica does is they reverse the liability from this liability only they give the equity shares so liability reversed to capital to premium and whatever is the balance of sbp reserve transferred to retained earnings So ideally, it is easier for you. Why? If you if they choose cash, do two cash bank. If the employee chooses equity option, then what to do? Reverse the liability. Give equity from this only up to face value capital balancing figure premium. This is what ICI has done. Anyways, so this was SBP with cash alternative that we discussed. Now the next point is um, group share based payment plan. What is the meaning of group share based payment plan? Let's say subsidiary announces a plan. But shares will be given by parent. So when subsidiary announces a plan, can I say employee benefit expense will be booked by subsidiary? But when parent is supposed to give shares, parent will say to SBP reserve. Now in both the companies, the entry is incomplete. So when can I say parent is helping subsidiary here by giving the shares? So parent will say 
help means investment in subsidiary and subsidiary is receiving the help so it will say capital contribution why it is help sir because to the employees of subsidiary parent is giving shares no simple right so whenever sub parent is helping subsidiary parent will say investment subsidiary to sbp reserve subsidiary will say employee benefit expense to capital contribution based on this uh, we did uh, two or three questions also okay but the important part here is uh, one question i will discuss where in illustration number 23 what was happening is i will show the illustration also if you want <coughs> what was happening is here subsidiary is saying that i don't want the full help whatever help they he will receive from the uh, parent he is going to read he is ready to reimburse 75 percent so let's say he is receiving a help of 5000 so he will he will reimburse up to 75 percent of the help so how will you account for such type of question do remember when subsidiary is ready to reimburse subsidiary books the full expense but in capital contribution he will not book full 5000 rupees why because he is going to reimburse the parent for 75 percent so whatever he will reimburse he will say to cash bank and whatever help he will receive he will say to capital contribution similarly parent will say to sbb reserve full 5000 but because he is reimbursing 75% cash bank, he will receive 75% cash bank and help is only 25%. So, investment you will debit only 25%. Okay, I'm just revising the question from above. Of course, do solve them in detail as well. Okay, again to remind this board notes I will upload on the telegram. These board notes in itself are self-sufficient for your coverage. Okay, there is one more concept here. That is the concept of grant date and measurement date. We have one question also based on that. What is the what is the concept? Do remember, share based payment can be between company and employee, can be between company and third party. In case of company and employee, grant date and measurement date are the same. What is the meaning of grant date? The date when we agree for the share based payment final approval date. And measurement date is the date when you calculate the fair value for measuring the SBP. So in case of employee, when the day it is a grant date, that day only you calculate the fair value. So grant date and measurement date are the same. In case of third party, grant date is a date when we agree into we enter into the agreement. But when is the measurement date? When you receive the goods and service. These two dates can be different in case of third party. Right? So if they are different, then grant date will be the agreement date, measurement date will be the date when you receive the goods and service. Right? But these two can be the same also. But in employee, they are definitely same. In third party, they can be same, they can be different. Do remember. Based on this, we have one question that is uh, question number two. I will just show it to you if you want. Sorry, question number one of MTBRTP, if you want to see. See, in first case, it is said that employees, final approval was there on 30th June. So, in case of employees, grant date, measurement date are the same. Second, uh, we entered into a contract with a third party to purchase IT equipment. Contract entered 1st April, grant date 1st April, but equipment was received on 30th July. So, measurement is 30th July. Simple. Third case, uh, employees, final approval was done on 30th September. So, in employees case, both data are going to be the same. Simple. Right? Okay. So, uh, this was the revision of index 102 but let me see if i have missed out on any question which i wanted to revise uh if yes then i will revise that question as well uh seven we did um then cancellation we discussed modification we discussed um market based measurement we discussed this also we discussed 21 um 22 also we discussed 23 done okay one discussed Achha, there is one question number two also which is based on index 102 and index 10. I'll tell you in a very simplified manner what is the crux of this question. Just have a look here. I have prepared a chart for you that will help you revise it very easily. Okay, see. So what happened is we announced a plan here. In that question, we announced a plan on first day. Two years is the vesting period. Okay. And after the vesting period ended, on the exercise date, the fair value has increased to 9. So on the first year, fair value was, was 6. Then it became 8. Then it became 9. Okay. And they have mentioned that the FS are approved on 12th of May. So this fair value increase. Is it an adjusting or non-adjusting event? Because if you treat it like an adjusting event, then you will change the fair value of this 9 in the previous year only. But of course, there were no condition existing of this increase. So this is the non-adjusting event, right? So if on first, on exercise date, the fair value is 9, you will not change the fair value on previous year end. So you will book the expense on 31st uh, March 13 first. Date is wrong, sorry. You will book the expense on 31st March 13 as per based on 6 fair value. Then you will book the fair uh, expense on 31st March 14 based on 8 rupees fair value. And then during exercise period, when you are making the payment because the fair value has changed, during exercise period, first you will remeasure and then you will make the payment. Do remember that. 
ओके सो बेसिकली द ओनली कंसेप्ट वॉज दैट बिकॉज ऑफ द चेंज इन फेयर वैल्यू आफ्टर इयर एंड बट बिफोर अप्रूवल ऑफ एफ एस दिस इज अ नॉन एडजस्टिंग इवेंट ओके yes so this completes our complete revision of indes 102 i hope it was helpful for you tried my best to revise all the concepts along with the relevant important questions of course your self practice is needed just watching the revision won't suffice so do self practice the questions as well if you like it leave a comment in the comment section also if you want more revisions also leave a comment okay thank you so much uh, bye bye everyone take care see you all